This is Malik Gahuk from the University of Colorado covering Fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitis in this edition of One Slide in Five Minutes. Fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitis, also known as Fuchs heterochromic cyclitis, presents as a chronic unilateral uveitis in young to middle-aged people with no race or sex predilection. On examination, typical findings include iris heterochromia, resulting from a decrease in the number of stromal melanocytes, with dark irides becoming lighter and light irides becoming darker, low-grade anterior chamber cell, posterior subcapsular cataract, and small stellate pan-corneal keratic precipitates. The important point about the keratic precipitates, as I just stated, is the fact that it covers the entire span of the cornea, and you typically see these very fine stellate-like KPs on the corneal endothelium. Intraocular pressure is often high. Inflammatory iris nodules may also be noted in about 20% of affected patients. Kepi nodules on the pupillary margin, remember kepi found on the cliff of the iris, and busaka nodules found on the surface of the iris, and you can remember that as busaka on the body of the iris, are not unusual findings in these patients. Complicating presentation for care is the fact that the disease process is often asymptomatic and without red eye. Bonioscopy often reveals fine vessels crossing the trabecular meshwork in about 6 to 22 percent of patients and are not accompanied by peripheral anterior synechia or fibrosis, but may progress and may bleed spontaneously, causing a hyphema. The Amsler sign is the name for bleeding in the anterior chamber after acute change in pressure in the eye, which can occur after paracentesis at the time of cataract surgery or sometimes spontaneously. Open angle glaucoma develops in 15% of affected patients, and controlling IOP is difficult to manage with topical therapeutics. Glaucoma may also result from trabeculitis, chronic steroid treatment, and neovascularization. It is important to note that IOP rise does not correlate with degree of inflammation. Unfortunately, use of steroids is often ineffective. Studies point to rubella as a causative factor, although this is not definitive and regardless does not alter treatment. Other studies, although with less rigor than those pointing to rubella, have also implicated ocular toxoplasmosis, herpes simplex virus, and cytomegalovirus. The diagnosis is one of exclusion, and viral causes such as HSV and CMV represent the most important etiologies to exclude through PCR testing, since specific antivirals may be used in such cases and may mitigate disease sequela. Fortunately, most patients maintain excellent vision despite chronic issues, and the most important take-home message is to have a high suspicion for this disease process when appropriate so that patient expectations are addressed and follow-up schedules are maintained. Consider visiting keogt.com for further educational material. This lecture and other lectures can be found on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for your time.